I'm Goose Jake here with my review of the new D-Dart Tempest. Now it's been out for a little bit and you might have caught some reviews elsewhere, but what this thing is, is a very neat uh, flywheel blaster that actually fits around your wrist and is one hand controllable, which ironically for me right now, that, that works out perfectly. Um, as you see, I'm, I'm not wearing my sling, but I am still trying to avoid using my that arm. I just get rid of the sling once in a while. But this, uh, this blaster is completely one hand controllable. It has a on off switch, which allows you to just turn it on and then fire. And I'll go ahead and actually do that. And as you see, it provides a uh, decent rate of fire and somewhat okay performance. We'll touch on that here in a second. But the blaster is actually pretty neat. It has a 28 round capacity all the way around that wrist and full auto with a counterclockwise rotating drum that is actually uh, flywheel powered and has a little dart flinger. It's not a, the pusher mechanism is pretty neat. It literally works like you would fling a dart if you were to if you were to flick something. That's how it works. It goes around these little teeth on the back side of the drum and it works up a little ramp and then flings down. And it hits the back end of the dart and knocks it. It doesn't really shove it in, but it knocks it into the flywheels. But and those flywheels are actually very easy to access. There's this little red cover is only Held on by two little Phillips head screws. You can access that if you wanted to get into the whole idea of modding it. But again, I want to touch a little bit on it, how much it costs, how it performs, and then give you my overall take after I tell you one big important uh, flaw that it might have. Uh, I hope it wouldn't actually detract you because this thing is pretty neat. But I'm going to get straight in on it. It's $29.99, available currently through Target, and the D-Dart Tempest here, it runs off of the odd choice of four AAA batteries. I'm glad they didn't use some kind of weird, funky battery style that nobody hardly ever uses, but because most people have AAAs in their house, but it is an odd choice. I'm sure they did it to keep this sleek and still have the voltage maybe, but I think they could have got away with maybe just a couple of double A's. Just personal opinion. But it does have four AAAs here in the grip, and you have a firing trigger, as well as your on and off switch right here. All pretty much almost accessible with the one hand. I do have to reach over here and flick the on and off switch with my other hand. But other than that, this is completely self-contained one hand firing. Which, again, it's pretty nice for me right now. But um, the 28 round capacity is pretty high, and it's easy to see how they could get that without it being too bulky, because it's just big enough basically to fit your hand through comfortably unless you've got some monstrous uh, mitt that this hand here is an XL or double XL size and I'm able to very comfortably grab this grip. I'm going to show you the performance on the chronograph session here right now. Coming back, the D-Dart Tempest isn't going to really stand out or shock anybody in performance. Mid 50s on single firing or just under 50 on full auto is well below your standard uh, velocity that we're used to of 70 for Nerf, say 80-ish for Busby, and all the way up to 90 or 95, even 100 for Dart Zone flywheel powered blasters or the Worker Hurricane that recently came out. Uh, the D-Dart Tempest itself has, that's pretty low performance, which may be completely intentional because, of course, the marketing for this is going to be geared at more people who are just wanting to have fun around the backyard of the house. And I'd say more of the house than anything because 50 feet per second means you're going to be arcing those shots in a rainbow trajectory. And the one thing is, this does excel indoors. And not just because of the performance aspect of it, but it's so compact. And this is where I'm going to get into my personal opinions of it. Outside of the one big flaw that it has, and if you haven't seen anybody, or anybody else's review, I will get to that here towards the end. 
the compactness and the uniqueness of this. You're not holding a blaster that looks like a rifle. You're not holding one that looks like a pistol. You're not holding one that looks like a submachine gun or a minigun. You're holding one that feels like an attachment of your body. And if you've never used one like this, and I mean, there is no other mass produced blaster in the market like this, but if you've never experienced it, it's very unique. It's just an extension. Wherever your arm is pointed, that's where it fires. And that's pretty cool. Inside, that means you can literally just reach around a corner, gotcha. Or reach over cover, gotcha. Sure, you can do that with a blaster, but the blaster's bigger, bulkier, and not as intuitive. This thing, it basically becomes a true extension of you. And it made me think of uh, Aldos' live stream where he has the close quarters battling. Something like this would be pretty awesome with a couple of modifications. I think it mainly. Uh, power source and flywheels and maybe the cage itself but the uh the fact is is that this thing's pretty cool and when using it it's fun now that that kind of whole that kind of whole thing relieves the lack of performance and like i said i think that that's going to have been possibly something they didn't really care to give it high performance because this thing is going to be very very fun to pick up as just you know you and the family having fun you and the you and some friends this that's what this is meant for I, but i have a secondary use that i think people who are more into the the nerfing hobby would really like this blaster here would be great to put a lanyard on going in through the back and around the grip and then put it on your side that's 28 shots at a moment's notice that you could have as a backup and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room and if it's here on your side it's not really in the way because it's not very big i mean sure it looks really round but it's not big it's not too bulky it's not very heavy fantastic backup blaster so personally i think that's a good way to use it now let's go ahead and just get the elephant in the room out of the room what is that huge problem i'm talking about well it can only fire a few kinds of darts. I mean, and it has to be very specific. It can fire its own suction cup darts that are supplied by D-Dart. It can fire X-Shot darts, just perfectly. And it can kind of fire Busby long distance and precise pros. I did also test it with worker full length darts. They work pretty okay-ish as well. The big problem is this rail. Now, a couple of the reviewers have pointed this out in their reviews. This rail gets in the way, and I'll show. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about instead of trying to do an in-depth explanation. So let's take a look at close-up footage of the problem using most of the major brands. I'm going to show you the problem here. Turn it on. It can't cycle because they're dragging on that rail, and those are yes pushed all the way back in. A couple of these. You have to shove them down and bend the foam a little bit to get it down in. That is a problem. And it's a little guide rail. As you can see, that men gun style one showing up. It's this dart. It's a NF strike. It's a variation of a waffle tip. The waffle tip there, it, some of these just, they drag so far. And there's a zombie strike one. You have to actually squish the foam, push it down in, and get that to stick down in. Well, by doing that, this is rubber. All these tips you know, are rubberized, and they will drag on this rail. So that's why you can't use Nerf Elites, Nerf Accustrikes, Accustrike Copies, Waffle Tips, you know, various Waffle Tips, and that's why if you were to look at, let's set that aside, we're going to stand that up, and there is the culprit. These darts are short. The D dart dart it's actually much shorter as you can see as much as almost a half of an inch shorter it's closer to about three eighths but that's give or take because the suction cups they have some variation in the height of them but now that you've seen it for yourself that's the problem nerf elites nerf accu strikes uh, adventure force waffle tips off-brand waffle tips 
adventure or Accu Strike copy darts. They all just kind of the rubber of the tips just hangs up on this rail, and it won't allow it to rotate. And there's ways around it if you want to go cutting and hacking. You can do that. Modify the blaster. You can do that. Or you can just use X-Shot darts, which is my personal recommendation. X-Shot darts in this feed just fine. They're the same length, approximately, as the included darts, and they work really well. They actually fire better than the included darts, so that's why I would just recommend using X-Shot darts with the D-Dart Tempest. For the future, D-Dart's probably going to take a look at this video, so I, my future recommendation is that they uh, measure the darts of their competitors, just expand. They could have expanded this just a half an inch, and every dart made would have cleared. And it wouldn't have added too much to the overall profile of the blaster to where it would be a problem. Just a half inch more on the rail. Which means they would probably just have to scoot this whole assembly back, literally, one half of an inch. And then all darts would have cleared. And then the thing would have basically no complaints for me because I'm not going to, I'm not really going to complain about the performance. The performance is what it is, and it, the blaster still works for its intended purpose. Really just kind of close quarters, family and friends play in the house. Or in small backyards. And it'll still work. I can still work in the job of uh, being a backup blaster. So the performance doesn't bother me. The dark compatibility does a bit. And I'm nothing if not an honest reviewer. So if that doesn't bother you, I can still recommend the blaster. I have plenty of X-Shot darts. If I'm going to run this, I'm just going to run them. So that's my way of getting around it, because I have literally hundreds and hundreds of X-Shot darts. And that's more than enough for me to run this. So that's my recommendation. I do recommend the Blaster. It's unique, and I like unique. It's slightly innovative with the feeding mechanism and the overall design, so I'm going to recommend it. I like innovative, unique things. And it's not overpriced to the point where you would say, Nah, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to touch that. It's going to drain my bank account. Because $29.99, it's right in there with the ballpark of a lot of blasters that are coming out from Dart Zone, X-Shot, and Busby. And that's kind of the, the area they should be in. Not 100 or 200. <laughs> but this thing right here, especially with D-Dart mentioning they're coming out with other models all the way up to four new models in the coming future, that's a big thing that I can get behind a new company doing innovative things and I hadn't even touched on the quality but so far the quality is pretty nice I mean it doesn't feel cheaply made it doesn't feel like there's going to be a major failure point at any any specific spot anywhere so I can recommend the blaster and that's that's all I can do hopefully this was helpful and useful for you and hopefully the information I provided helps you to make your own decision but I will put a link below if you decide that this is something you are interested in. This is Mongoose Jake and my review of the D-Dart Tempest. Hope you enjoyed this. And again, thanks for watching.